What's up, Tucson, Arizona? This is the Call Me Crazy Show, episode 233. Right? Oh, cool. Uh, episode 233, Call Me Crazy Show. Uh, by the time you've seen this, uh, it'll be, like you said, mid, mid-May. Mid-May. Uh, I'm, we're filming uh, last week of uh, April, as a matter of fact. But anyways, I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be here. A uh, couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, um, I have a couple quotes I'm going to talk about first, and then after I talk about the quote, I'm going to be talking about uh, Governor Jan Brewer, who, who, by the way, is governor of our state, Arizona. Then after I talk about her, we're going to be talking about some uh, pop culture stuff. But first, the most important stuff we're going to be talking about. Okay, uh, we live in uh, we live in the greatest country in the world. We live in a greatest country in the world, the U.S., and I know we have our, our, our faults uh, and our flaws with our uh, judicial system and uh, the federal government and, you know, but we're still, uh, we have, sure, we, we're just like any other country in the world that has problems, but we're still the greatest country in the world. And get to, uh, I was reading a periodical a couple of days ago, and I managed to write it down, and uh, it's a quote attributed to a uh, 22-year-old citizen from the country of Somalia, uh, Somal uh, Somalia. Uh, and it's a quote that I attribute to him and he says, uh, Now I think we are going to be faced, uh, forced to hear only the horrific sound of the gunfire and explosions. And he's referring to the fact that the uh, Somali Islamic uh, militants has banned music on all radio in Somalia as of uh, as of uh, April 13th. So on April 13th in Somalia, these Islamic uh, militants uh, uh, banned music from the uh, airway from radio. And so this guy has said, a uh, 22-year-old citizen who had who had probably listened to everything from metal to rap. I'm almost positive here in the age of iPods and iPads and the internet. Uh, like I said, he said, now I think we're going to be forced to hear only the horrific sound of gunfire and explosion. So I, I, no, I, I know I have days where I have, uh, excuse my language, shitty days. I'm just like everybody else. I'm not different from nobody else. Just because I'm on TV uh, doesn't mean I have bad days, just like everybody else. But uh, when I read that a couple days ago, uh, made me appreciate the music that I hear on my iPod. Because uh, here in America, you are uh, you are allowed to have an iPod and listen to whatever kind of music you want, whatever it is. And to think that the only sound now that the citizens of Somalia are going to listen to is uh, it's the horrific sounds of gunfire and explosion. So. To, to be a 22 year old out in Somalia and then have all the, the only known music taken away from you and you're only forced to hear all the horrible sounds uh, makes you appreciate life more here in the U.S. So I just wanted to tell you guys about that. Uh, I thought that was very important because um, we, I, I want to make sure that you people out there, uh, out there in La La Land who are truly adored and loved, I want to make you guys uh, uh, realize and be aware that uh, we are lucky and blessed to be in the U.S. Because uh, imagine living in a place, like I have said before, where you got to wake up not knowing the house next door is going to be blown up or men are going to come into your house uh, welding machetes and, and uh, shotguns and machine guns and ready to kill your family. So uh, I feel like Ellen DeGeneres, no, not being uh, blonde, white, or gay, uh, I feel like Ellen DeGeneres because she's such a music lover and she's also an American Idol. And music has been a big part of my life and I feel bad for the people of Somalia because uh, that's, that's, that, that's another form of how I believe. Where you are not able to hear music anymore, you know, that's banned from radio. So, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to get off my chest. Uh, uh, now, for the past couple episodes, I have been talking about uh, manned space flight, NASA. Um, I talked about the the uh, astronauts who are pro for the idea of the private sector coming in and taking over manned space flights. 
uh, for example, uh, Sir Richard Branson and uh, uh, Jeff uh, Jeff uh, Beatle. I forgot his last name. The uh, founder of Amazon. But anyway, they have formed some private rocket ship company, and they're ready for big man flight next year. And uh, and, and what Barack Obama wants to do, he's bringing in the uh, private sector. He's letting private companies now take a stab of, of trying to get out into outer space on their own without the help of a NASA. NASA now has a new goal. And uh, oh, a while ago, I found a quote that could sums up my whole feeling of the NASA program. Uh, Barack Obama said, Nobody is more committed to man space flight than I am. But we got to do it in a smart way. We can't keep doing the same old thing as before. And he hit the nail uh, on the he hit uh, he hit the nail on the head when he says that because uh, that's perfect what he says. That that what NASA needs it needs an extreme makeover in terms of of how they uh, set in their goals because we we know in a couple of more weeks a couple more months uh, the space shuttle is being phased out and there's a new uh, new space bird coming to take its place. So that was a cool quote that I found uh, that I attributed to Barack Obama. Okay, then here's another thing. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, in the in in current event, I found a tribute. Uh, I found a quote to, to Ringo Starr. We all know who Ringo Starr is. Ringo Starr was one of the, uh, one of the, uh, was a drummer or one of the greatest bands in the world, the Beatles. But anyways, a couple of days ago, uh, the Vatican, we all know what the Vatican is. It's the institution in Rome that runs the Roman Catholicism uh, institutions and dioceses around the world and their headquarters. And anyway, they, uh, they accepted an apology. Oh, no, pretty much they said it was uh, that they forgive uh, John, Paul, George, and Ringo uh, uh, the Beatles for saying that uh, the Beatles were bigger than Jesus Christ back in the 60s. If you don't remember that, John Lennon back in the 60s has said Jesus, uh, the Beatles are is bigger than Jesus Christ. And some people said that he didn't say it. Some other people said that he did say it. He was misconstrued. But uh, anyway, the Vatican said a couple days ago that they forgive uh, the Beatles for saying that. Okay, then Ringo Starr uh, shot back and uh, he, he put a quote out um, and I think he's doing it in a sarcastic tone. He's saying, I think the Vatican, they got more things to talk about than the Beatles. So, uh, uh, I, I thought that would be interesting to talk about because, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a hard and touchy subject when you're talking about religion. Uh, considering... Uh, the fact that there's all sorts, sorts of uh, extremism all over the world with religion. Because we all know religion is one of the major factors of, of all war in the world. Okay, now back to the U.S. Uh, past couple days, past two weeks, it has been uh, hellacious for the state of Arizona. Because uh, Governor Jan Brewer, who I hate very much, even though I know she's the governor of Arizona, who who I love very much, uh, Jan Brewer is an evil bureaucratic uh, politician. You know she don't care about anybody else except her and her crony, her cool cats. But uh, uh, a bill was passed a couple days ago saying you got uh, the law enforcement is now forced in the state of Arizona. All law enforcement is forced in the state of Arizona to ask for proper credentials to identify U.S. citizens here in the state of Arizona. If you don't have a proper credential, they're going to assume that you're an illegal immigrant and they're going to take measures and steps to deport you or whatnot. Uh, it's pretty freaking, it's pretty fucking stupid, I think. Uh, on my last episode, I, did an, uh, I read an editorial that ran in the New York Times where uh, New York uh, Times newspaper, which is read all over the world, uh, think Arizona is a fucking police state, you know, and, and here's the saddest part um, We are now known and I'm not making this up guys 
Uh, Arizona is now known America's dumbest state. Before America's dumbest state for a while was Georgia, because they have very fucked up laws over there, I read. But uh, now the crown has been handed over to Arizona, and now Arizona is America's dumbest state. Okay, and, and get to show how, uh, how dumb we are, uh, the whole mainstream media have been taking pot shots at Arizona. Uh, Comedy Central <laughs> uh, making fun of the, uh, the legislation that uh, Jan, Jan Brewer passed. Uh, they're calling it. They're calling it the anti-Brown legislation, and then the uh, the U.S. News and World Report magazine. They are calling uh, Arizona the nuttiest legislation body ever, saying in terms of all the years that uh, all all the states have been doing their work for hundreds of years, 150 years, or 170 years, whatever state that it is that you're in, the U.S. News and World Report said. This current legislative body in Arizona is the nuttiest ever. And, uh, in, and here to show you the ignorance of Jan Brewer, I found some quotes from her. And this is what she said. And when she said this and I read this, I felt, you dumb, you dumb. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't have any words to describe politicians because I, you know, I know Democrats and Republicans and this, the Tea Party. Uh, they're all politicians, they're all the same, but I would like to think there are some who are not, uh, who are not the same as others. Hopefully, I, I get that Obama is not the same like the other politicians. But anyway, Jan Brewer said, uh, President Obama simply turned a blind eye to the issue that Arizona is being overrun by illegal immigration and terrorizing the city. What? And then, she, and then she also said, those who have failed to protect us have shown only carelessness and delay. What is Jan Brewer talking about? She is misinformed. And here's the thing, she says Arizona is being overrun by illegal immigration and, and, and illegal immigrants are terrorizing the cities of Arizona. You know what, Jan Brewer, if, you know what I think about you, I, I, I think that you're like the devil's daughter. You know, all you need is some horns, and you'd be like the perfect bitch for Satan. But, uh, Jan Brewer, you're fucking the state up, you know, you're making the, the fucking laughing stock of the nation. You know, late night talk show hosts are, are taking so many pot shots at us. You know, they're, they're, they're saying, like they will all say, uh, what is up with Arizona? Remember, uh, 20, 22 years ago, uh, we made the rounds in the mainstream media because we didn't want to pass the Martin Luther King uh, holiday. That was back when uh, Evan Meekham was the dumbass governor then. And there's another fucking idiot, too. You know, we only seem to get idiots for governor, you know. Uh, Rose Moffat was, uh, was not an idiot, and neither was Jan Napolitano. But uh, Eric Meekum and Jan Brewer, they fucking take the cake. And, uh, and of course, how can I forget Fife Simonton? He takes the cake. And how, how ironic is that, that he takes the cake? Because he's a pastry chef now. Another fucking idiot who fucked up the state too. Okay, enough about that. Uh, and the cool, um, the cool fact that I found about as of April 9th, 2010 of this year, the seven billion baby, uh, uh, the, the seven billion people mark was passed. So as of April 9th, 2010 of this year, the Earth population total uh, became seven billion people, which is a lot of people. All right, uh, that's what I got for now. Now I'm gonna be talking about pop culture. Uh, on a sad note, Malcolm McLaren, if you don't know who he is, Malcolm McLaren was one of the founding fathers of the punk rock scene in London, and also one of them uh, was also the manager for Sex Pistols and uh, Bow Wow and New York City Dolls. But he's more famous for managing the Sex Pistols. Uh, he died at the age of 64. Okay, and then I, I was reading a couple things online and in the paper. Uh, there's a new 
a Predator movie coming out. Uh, it's being being it was produced by Robert Rodriguez, and uh, I saw a picture of some of the Predator. It looks interesting. Comes out July 9th, and uh, I, I don't know. I like Eating and Brody. I think his best movie he has ever done was not King Kong, but uh, when he played the gay punk rocker in Son of Sam. But Eddie and Brody is in Predators. Uh, that's due out July 9th. We'll see how that does at the box office. Uh, then uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie comes out finally in July 2nd. And that's The Last Airbender. That movie called The Last Airbender. Uh, supposedly it's not one of the... It's not a movie with a twist ending. Uh, it's not one of those mysterious movies. They say it's an all out uh, blockbuster type kind of movie. Which is a kind of a departure for, for uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Well, we all know uh, he's famous for making The Sixth Sense, Signs, and just recently The Happening, which was not too bad, but wasn't very good either. All right, uh, this wraps up episode 233. I'll be back in a while. Uh, we'll be, I'm going to be talking about a couple of current events that are going on with public access. Uh, as when I talk about it later, we'll be doing some uh, uh, on-location stuff. So I I am talking way too close to it, and I'm in it here. Uh, uh, before we uh, we sign off, I'll probably see you guys in a little bit. But uh, here we go. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? The Call Me Crazy Show, The Call Me Crazy Show, The Call Me